Circle. In this cave by the restless sea, we are met to call from out the past stories strange and weird. Bellkeeper, toll the bell so all may know we are gathered again in the Weird Circle. that the feuds between the houses of the great are shrouded in mystery and antiquity. However, in at least one instance, that of the neighboring houses of Stenoff and Luren in Hungary, the beginning of the feud itself was pictured in a great tapestry hanging in one of the upper rooms of the Luren castle. It was hung so that the observer, having looked upon the disgrace of the Stenoff ancestor, could turn and look from that very room at the glory of the present Stenoff castle. Once the families had been close friends and had made their homes as close to each other as possible. But greed and jealousy had at least two centuries ago caused a murderous hatred between them. I observed the inconceivable finale of this great feud between these two houses at first hand because of my position as personal servant and confidant to young master Frederick Luram. In fact, Strange things began to happen the very day of the death of Frederick's father. We were standing in the tapestry room. Goethe. Uh, yes, Master Frederick. I'm right here, sir. Oh. Do you hear it, Goethe? Do you hear that bell? Yes, sir. It's They're the... tolling it for his death. They don't know, do they, Goethe, that he lives on forever? Lives on forever, sir. Listen to me, Goethe. Listen. My father died last night, but I knew it even before they started tolling the bell. I knew it when the last breath left his body. I knew it because he and I are now the same person. His life goes on in my body just as his father's life went on in his. It's been so ever since the first of the Lurens. Our spirit is undying. It has always been a great house, sir. Greater than the house of Stenoff, eh, hey, Gertner? Yes, greater than the Stenoffs. Much greater, Master Frederick. Master Frederick no longer, Gertner. Baron Frederick now. Yes, sir. Baron Frederick. Yes, Gertner. Our house is greater, but for one. The daughter of Baron Stenoff. Elsa. Ah, oh, Gertner, I love her. No one, nothing will ever stop my marrying her. Tonight, when I meet her in the garden, I'll tell her that at last I can marry her. For now, I'm the master of Luren Castle. Very true, Herr Baron. Very true, sir. You see, Gertner, even the bell knows now that there is still a master of this castle. A powerful master. Everyone knows, Baron Frederick, that the present Baron is the greatest of all the Lurens. This tapestry, Gertner, the fight in that scene, it happened almost 200 years ago, and yet, it seems that it's still going on. The Lurens won that fight, sir. Yes, and the Stenoff swore vengeance from then on. Even to the last of us, good. Even down to me. And such a hatred, sir, will last until one family is destroyed. Baron Stenoff hates me personally, though, Gertner. And he hates me with a deadly hate. Still, today is the day we must meet, he and I. For today, as happens only once a year... The Baron Luren and the Baron Stenoff meet to discuss affairs of state. Stand by me, Goethe, while he's here. Take stock of what he says. 
It wasn't long before the Baron Stenoff was announced. I noticed during the interview that he looked very often at the tapestry and his eyes followed back each time to the face of Frederick Luram. As I followed his glance, I could see why. The face of the Luran in the tapestry was exactly the face of my master. The likeness and the look of proud superiority were the same. From the moment the Baron Stenoff entered the room, there was an air of animosity between them. Good day, Baron Frederick. Since it is necessary, Baron, come in. A chair here is prepared for you. I see, so that I may gaze directly at that accursed tapestry. It's not a favorite of yours, sir, I know that. But it is a favorite of mine, and this, remember, is my house. You are no more polite young man than your father before you. While my father's body still lies in this house, even such a man as you, Baron Stenoff, must feel a duty of some respect. Never, Baron Frederick, shall I feel respect for a Lauren. Dead or alive. Beware, sir. Someday you may be taken as suddenly as he was. Ridiculous. Why, I'm as strong and healthy as a horse. As that horse there in the tapestry, perhaps? <laughs> that is a tremendous beast, sir. And like you, Baron, it was a Stenoff. I doubt that you could ever master a Stenoff horse. I dare say, sir, I could ride any horse alive. Someday, no doubt, there will be one that will master you, Frederick. Let us hope not, Baron. That would indeed be unfortunate for my proposed marriage to your daughter. My daughter? In fact, I have already asked Elsa, and she has agreed, pending your consent. Because she knew you would never have it. Our families were born only to hate and to destroy each other. That is still true, Baron, but for one, Elsa. The blood must have weakened in the Lauren line, Frederick. You would try to get the mastery of my estates now by marriage rather than murder. I warn you, Frederick. The hatred reflected in that horse's eyes there in the tapestry against that murdering Lauren is not dead yet. <laughs> Two hundred years ago, a Lauren murdered a Stenov, and the hatred lasts in the eyes of a tapestry horse. And in the heart of a Stenov. Have you noticed, Frederick, the face of the Lauren in that tapestry? It is your face, exactly. While you were talking, Baron, I've been looking at the eyes of that horse. Tonight I see that they're really like human eyes, like your eyes, in fact. Strangely like yours. Perhaps I, too, shall come back after death. <laughs> As a horse? <laughs> oh, Baron, remember the prophecy about our family. A lofty name shall have a fearful fall when, as the driver over his horse, the mortality of Lauren shall triumph over the immortality of Stenoff. Perhaps if I were to prove that I could ride a Stenoff horse... Perhaps. Try it. Try it someday, Frederick. I have never heard a stranger conversation... Nor have I seen such looks of hatred upon two men's countenances. This being a tale of hatred can have no definite meanings, for hatred itself, in its very essence, is insidious. Yet I knew there was a very definite threat in the Baron Seneff's last words. And nevertheless, that evening, Frederick went as usual to the garden of the neighboring Seneff Castle to meet his lovely Elsa. Elsa? Frederick, my darling. Oh, Elsa, my darling. I was afraid you wouldn't be able to come. Is tonight different from any other night? I couldn't miss seeing you like this, even if it were only for a minute. Nothing could stop me. I was afraid that your father would be watching you. I spoke to him today. You spoke to him about us? Yes. He was furious. He threatened my life. Your life. Oh, Elsa. Elsa, come with me now. Come tonight. We'll be married tomorrow and live safely together. Safe from your father, from, from all the evil things that he thinks and plans. I want to, Frederick. I want to so much. But you shall not, Elsa. You certainly shall not. Father. Well, you see now, don't you, Baron, that Elsa wishes to marry me as much as I wish to marry her. I told you before that that was impossible. You're an old man, Baron. Someday you'll be powerless to stop us. Then, then... Even then, Baron Frederick. Even then, you will not be safe. 
What then, Baron Frederick? After I've died, for your chance to ride a stem of horse. What does he mean, Frederick? Father, what is this? It's a part of the threat he made this afternoon. A threat that shall be carried out, Frederick. Wait and see. And now, Elsa, come with me back to the castle. Baron Stenoff had made his threat again. I didn't realize how much it really affected my master until later that same night. He was sitting in the room in which hung the fatal tapestry. Outside, everything was in confusion. But there, high up in the castle, not a sound could be heard. I knocked on the door. Come in. Baron Frederick. Baron Frederick, sir. Well, good. Now, what's all the excitement? The stables. The stables of Stenoff. Baron, look out there. Out the window, sir. They're on fire. What? Well, is that so exciting, Goodner? But they're about to collapse, sir. The animals, all the horses, they can't save them all. It's a just vengeance on Stenoff. He loved his horses best of all, Goodner. If he loses them, it's only the first sign that he's going to lose all he but has. You see, they're running wild, sir. All the horses, look, they're escaping. It's strange, Gertner, that I should have been here, looking at a horse while this was going on. The tapestry horse? Yes. I came into this room because I wanted to look at it again. It's a magnificent animal. Now you see out the window there, Gertner. None of the horses that the present Stenoff has is as big or as strong as this one. Baron Frederick! Baron Frederick! Look there. What? The roofs of the stables have just collapsed. And I saw the Baron run into them just this minute. Then that's the end of him. Oh, I know, but look at the tapestry now, sir. Look at it. What? What about it? That horse in the tapestry there. It moved. No. The light of the fire is playing strange tricks with the figures. But no, sir. Look. Look there now. His head has turned. He's looking at you, sir. Looking at you now, right at you. His eyes. His eyes, good. They're like human eyes. They seem to glow with hate. Good, now look. He's moving again. And your shadow, Baron. Your shadow. It's fallen exactly over the figure of the man on the ground. Good, now look out the window there, quickly. Oh, yes, sir. It is. It is. Running from the ruins of the stable. It's a horse. Exactly like this one in the tapestry. Baron... Baron Frederick, it's coming into your own courtyard. Quickly, Gertner, quickly. We must get out of here. Down there and catch that beast quickly, Gertner. Baron Frederick, look! What? Huh? <sighs> tapestry horse. It's gone from the tapestry. There's nothing there now but an empty space. Quickly, Gertner, quickly. Lock that door and lock it securely. the firelit courtyard, the look of astonishment on the young Baron Frederick's face betrayed to me that he had noticed the same thing I had. The horse now before us was exactly the same beast we'd been watching with such fascination in the tapestry. It had the same enormous fawn-colored body, the same magnificent head, the same eyes. Good. The eyes. Look at that animal's eyes. Why, they're almost like human eyes, sir. The way they look at me... They stare at me as though the beast actually hated the sight of me. They're like... They're like the eyes of... Like the eyes of Baron Stenoff. Goodner. Look at him, sir. When he heard that name, Goodner. When he heard that name, he reared up. Could it be possible... He believed that his soul would live again in another form. Goodner. Look. That animal is standing still. Right here beside me. It's as though he wanted me to mount his back. Frederick! Frederick! Here, Elsa. Here. Frederick. Father. I know, my darling. I know. 
I saw it all from the window, but I was powerless to do it. Hold still now. Be quiet. Frederick, what happened? He was running toward the barn, Elsa. He ran so wildly. It was as though he were being chased by something. He, he seemed frightened. The horses. He loved his horses. He was afraid for them. He ran right into the barn, Elsa. Right into the flaming barn. Nothing escaped the wreck, Elsa. Nothing he... except this one horse. I've never seen it before, Frederick. It's not one of ours. <coughs> but it must have been. It ran from the wreckage of that stable. From that very stable where... Where father was killed. Say it, Frederick. <laughs> Go ahead and say it. Yes, Elsa, from that very barn. Look, Frederick, look. He's standing still beside you, as though he wants you to mount him. Yes. Perhaps I will. Perhaps I will. That horse, sir. And why not? Remember, sir, the tapestry. Well, so much the better, goodness, so much the better. If it really is... If it really is what we think it is... Think what it will mean. But remember, sir, remember the prophecy as the rider over his horse. And now, Gertner, now is the chance to prove that prophecy. Here, hold. No, Frederick, no. I have a premonition. Don't try to ride him. Don't, please, Frederick. Oh, now, Elsa, my darling. Look, I'll, I'll mount him right around the courtyard here and be right back. No, Frederick, please. Well, why not wait, sir? Wait until the horse has been rested before you try to mount him. The excitement tonight, all that has happened, he may be better in the morning. Well, perhaps you're right, Gertner. Perhaps. <laughs> Very well, Stenoff Horse. We'll rest you until tomorrow. And then Aluren, for the first time, will ride a Stenoff Horse. Frederick, the way you say that, almost as though you hated the horse himself for being a Stenoff. A Stenoff He's a stenoff, all right. Why, it's almost as though he understood every word you say, sir. Yes, Gertner, I believe he does. What are you two talking about? What do you mean? Elsa, these... These things are not for you to worry about. Tomorrow we will ride. For tonight, the fire is almost burned out now. You'd better go back to your room and get some sleep, Elsa. In the morning. Then we'll see how the prophecy turns out. Good night, then, Frederick. Good night. Good night, Elsa. Shall I take the horse to our stable, sir? Yes, Gertner, and quickly. Very well, sir. Be careful, Frederick. Please be careful. There's something about that horse. Oh, last night, Elsa, when it was dark and there was only the light of the burning stables to see him by, I'll admit he did look terrifying. But today... Today he will look just as terrible. Well, here comes Gertner with him now. We shall see. He looks like a beast from the Middle Ages. Yes. They had horses like that then, didn't they? Tremendous, fierce beasts they were. I've heard Father talk about them sometimes. He seemed fascinated by them. Your father? You know he was fascinated by horses. He studied them as though they were a science. Oh, look out! He'll be all right, Elsa. Gertner has a firm hold on him. Here he is, sir. Good. And we're ready, huh? Hmm? Watch, then. Watch as a Loren rides a Stenoff horse. <laughs> or is it a jackass? <laughs> hold. Hold still there. Are you still going to ride him, sir? More so now than ever, Gertner. Here. Give me a hand up. Very well, sir. <laughs> there. Hold still. There. Now the Stenoff horse will find the rider. Away we go. Oh, no. Bring him back, sir. Frederick. Frederick, stop. He's carrying you off into the woods. Pull him in, sir. Pull, Pull him in, sir. Frederick. Gertner. Gertner, what can we do? Go get another horse. Go after them. It's no use, madame. It's no use. That horse is as swift as the wind. He's carried the baron much too far to catch them. There must be something we can do. We can't let them go just like that. There may be one thing. What is it? Well, I'm not certain, but there must be something, some answer in that room. What room? Gertner, tell me what you're thinking in of. In the room with the tapestry. Come, madame, with me quickly. There may be an answer there. Take me there. I don't understand, but perhaps you can show me. I'll take you to the room with the tapestry. The tapestry that your father hated so much. The one... The one with the horse in it. Gertner. That's it. That horse. The very one. That horse. 
He was like the one Frederick is writing now. That is why we will go there. Oh, here we are, madame. Here's the room. Why is it locked? Baron Frederick ordered it so after last night. Last night? Did something happen up here last night? The horse seemed to come alive last night as we watched it in the light of the burning stable. It's so dark in here. I'm frightened. Curtain of the windows are open, and, and yet it's dark. It's as though the room were filled with smoke. Is there a lamp? Something to make more light? Curtain, did you hear that? Yes, madame, I heard it. We must work quickly. Anything may happen now. It was like the whinny of a horse. A curtain or a lamp, some kind of a light. Yes, madame, just a moment. Here, here. Here's a lamp. You wait until I light it. There's still oil in it. Hurry, Curtin, hurry. This darkness, it's awful, like a blanket over the room. Yes, sir. Here. There you are, madame, there. At last. Now I can see a little, but it's still dark. Give me the lamp, Gertner. Let me look at the tapestry. Over here, madame. Gertner! It's gone! The horse is gone! He left the tapestry last night, right before we found that horse in the courtyard. <gasps> oh, Gertner! The, the lamp, madame, look out, the lamp! The lamp! <laughs> Why, it's, it's fallen over. It's burning! The whole room's a fire! Oh. Look, look there! The flames seem to have leapt all over the walls. Run, Gertner. Run for our lives. This way, madame. This way. The door is over here. Did you hear that, Gertner? Did you hear that noise? Yes. It was as though the horse was right there in the room with us. Yes, sir. Perhaps it was, madame. Yes, indeed. I heard it. Look. Look ahead. Yes. The fire seems to have run ahead of us. It's almost at the stairs. The whole castle seems to be on fire all at once. Down this way. The stairs are still holding. But do be careful. It's all right so far. Come on. We're almost at the door. The whole castle is on fire. Out this way, quickly. Yes, madam. There. There. There, we're safe now. We've got away. The whole castle. It's in flames. Yes, madam. Listen. It's... It's a horse. Coming this way. Oh, oh listen, Gertner. Listen. Do you hear? It's Frederick. And look, madame, they're coming right toward us. But Frederick. <laughs> he's not afraid anymore. He's laughing. And the horse seems so tame. But look there. It's doing exactly what Baron Frederick commands. Frederick. Frederick, my darling. Are you safe? Safe? <laughs> Allure him safe on a stand of horse? Of course. Whoa, whoa. Why, it's amazing. Look there, how the horse obeys him. And the way he stands. So still. Almost like a statue. And his eyes, so calm and almost friendly. <laughs> oh, here, uh, let me help you down, sir. Oh, all right, Gerda. There. Hey. Ah, hold, hold there. <gasps> hold. Oh, oh. Come back here! Look! He's dashing right into the flames! The horse! He's going right into the burning castle! Good! Uh, we've got to stop him! He'll be killed! We were sure that everything that had been inside that inferno was completely destroyed. Next day, we returned to look over the charred ruins. In some places, there were still little curls of smoke coming from the heaps of refuse. Surely, Frederick, surely everything is gone. We will build it again, Elsa. It'll be a greater castle than ever. We will build it together, Frederick. Build everything together now. My Baron darling. Frederick, come. Uh, come quickly, Baron Frederick. There's something over here. What? What is it, Gertner? Something, something you must see, sir. Gertner, you look so startled. It must be something terrible. Oh, no, madame, it isn't anything so awful. It's, look there, sir. Right under that pile of rubble that's still smoking. Why, it, it's a piece of cloth. Yes. It's a tapestry. It is. Yes, it is. Here, good. Uh, here, help me. Help yes. me to pull it out. Yes, sir. There you are, sir. Uh, there. Unfold it quickly. Look there. Look at it. Not even one scorch. In all this blaze, it didn't burn at all. And look there, sir. Over there in the corner. Yes, Gertner. I see. The horse. It's back there in its place in the tapestry. 
And its expression. It's as though his whole spirit had been broken. As though... Frederick. It is the same horse. The horse you rode yesterday. Yes, Elsa. The horse I rode yesterday. At last, the mortality of Aluren has triumphed over the immortality of a Staneth. You see, Elsa, you see. Aluren has finally broken the spirit of a Staneth. And it was I, Frederick, I who finally did it. Frederick. Frederick, come with me now. Come home with me. Can't we let these things be? These horrible things. Can't our families be the same? Yes, my darling. Yes, Elsa, I'll come with you. I'll come. For at last, at long last, the hatred of our families is ended. Now there's only one family. And its name shall be Lurin. From the time-worn pages of the past, we have brought you the story, The Tapestry Horse. Bellkeeper, toll the bell. Thank you.